Hey, it's Jim from Janku, and today I want to take a look at the variadic functions in Go. Now, variadic functions allow you to add multiple parameters to a single variable in your function declaration, and it also allows you to do things like fake optional parameters. So, Go does not have a built in mechanism for putting an optional parameter in there, so let's go and see how we can set one of those up with a variadic function. I'll start by coming over here in the variadic folder that we have here, and I'll add a new file here. I'll call this main.go. And then in here, I'll do a package main. And in our main function, let's declare a new function called sum. And in sum, we'll pass two and two. So now, if we wanted to define a function like this that adds two and two together, you could come down here and you could write the function keyword and you could name it sum and then you specify that sum has num1 which is an integer type you have to declare the type of the variable and then there's num2 and that's an integer type and then down here you could do something like this num1 plus num2 and we could just format print this so let's do a format print line I'm going to have to add the num1 back in there. num1, num2. And if I were to save this, so I'm going to write this to the file system. Let me open up a terminal here. And I'm just going to go build the binary for this program. You'll see that it creates a binary here called variadic. And that's just the name of the folder here. And then I can run variadic by just doing a dot forward slash variadic. And you see that we get printed out here the number four. So this is a typical function. So you see here, we are passing two arguments, two and two. Those are coming in as parameters to this sum function that we've declared here. So num1 and num2, and we're just adding them together. Now, what if we want to do something like summing an unknown amount of numbers? So maybe we want three numbers sometimes, maybe it's four numbers another time. For instance, we could leave sum two plus two there, but maybe we want to do sum one, two, three, or something like that. So now you'll see that already here, we're getting an error thrown here. So it's saying there's too many arguments. There's only two arguments that are expected down here where we're declaring the function and we're passing three up here, so that's a problem. Now, one thing we could do here is we could use the variadic operator. So let's come in here and let's change this to just num and let's get rid of the second parameter here. And then you use the syntax here where you're declaring the type of the variable. So you do dot, dot, dot. And now we're saying, this is any number of integers that are coming in as this num variable here. So if we wanted to use that down below, we could do something like this. Do a for loop. For, and then let's call this num actually. And let's call this nums. And so let's come back up here and say nums for the parameter that we're defining. So for num in nums. And let's actually, even before here, let's come up here and let's declare a total variable. So total, and we'll just set this to zero. So we're declaring this as a new variable here. So this is just an integer. And then let's come back down here and let's just say total plus equals num. So what we're doing, if you haven't seen the plus equals operator before, that's just saying basically this. It's saying the same thing as saying total equals total plus num. You can declare it more simply by just saying plus equals num. So once we have that, so what's going to happen here is whatever amount of numbers we pass in here through this variadic operator, we're going to do a loop over all those values. And we're just going to add them to this total, which starts at zero. So first we'll get zero plus one, which will equal one. And then that'll be assigned to total. And then we'll run again. And the next time through over here, we'll get two. So one plus two is three. That gets assigned to total. And then we'll run through a third time here on this one and we'll add pass in three. So it'll be three plus three will be six. And then let's just console log this here. Actually, sorry, console log is JavaScript. Let's do a format print line in Go. And let's just print the total out here and I'll save that. And let's come down here and let's just build this again. And so now we're gonna get two values. So the first time through, we're gonna call sum. We should get four. The second time through, we should get six. So let's run this build and then we'll run the program, and we do indeed get four and six here. So that's great, so that shows us how we can pass 
a few extra parameters, but what happens if we wanted to have an optional parameter? Well, I've actually done that in one of my programs over here. So let me open up Firefox. Now, one of the projects I have here is this project called Plenty, which is public on GitHub if you want to check it out. It's an open source static site generator that has a Svelte front end and a Go back end. And basically what we're doing here is we have this benchmark function, which allows us to know how long different parts of the build are taking. And what we're doing here is we're passing this always run Boolean. And what that allows us to do here, and again, we come down here actually first, and we check the length of always run to see if it exists, if it's one. Then we get the benchmark flag here because that's a certain flag that we're passing in as true. And you can see it being implemented over here. So we have this first call to build benchmark here where we get the time now and we have some information and then we pass true. But subsequent calls to this actually just pass nothing for this third parameter. And it doesn't affect the running of the program because over here we're allowing it to not exist through this operator. So let's just show a simple example of implementing something like that. So let's take another scenario. I'm gonna get rid of this and let's just pretend here that we're at a grocery store and we wanna buy different items and some of the items have discounts that we can apply to them and others don't. So let's come down here, let's redefine this sum function as a buy function. And we can get rid of a lot of this here. So let's just remove this. And let's say that we have an item here. And that item will be of a string type. And then it will have an amount that will be an int. And then we'll say that there's an optional discount here. Now, in our main function, we can come up here and we could buy a few things. So we could buy something like milk. And we could say it's $2, maybe it's $3 and it doesn't have a discount, so we're not gonna do anything with that. We could buy cookies, and those are $4. But we have a $1 coupon off that, so it'll take the effective price down to $3, so we'll buy that. And then we have one more item. Let's say this is chips. You can tell how healthy my grocery store shopping goes. And we'll say the chips are four bucks and we have a $2 discount on those. So now down here in our buy function, we could do something like this. We could say, is the length, if the length of discount is greater than zero. So if we have any items in this discount, so we could have multiple. In this case, we're only using this as an API to only allow one item, but there could be multiple here. Let's say if this is greater than zero, then let's just grab the first discount. We're assuming we're only gonna have one here. Maybe we could have multiple, and maybe we could even extend this program to account for that if we wanted to. But let's say that we have the amount that we originally had minus equals discount. And we actually have to get the discount item so zero so this could be multiple items so you can see here that this is an array of integers so let's get the first one out of that array with the zero index and then what we're saying here is amount equals amount minus discount so again you could write this the same way as before so amount equals amount minus discount this is the exact same thing as just writing amount minus equals discount okay so we'll save that and then let's come down here and say Format that print f, and we'll just say you bought, and then we'll do a replacement pattern. So percent v in this case for percent d, and then we'll just pass in the item as the first string, and then we'll pass in the amount as the second here. So this should replace item for the V and it should replace amount for the D here. And then essentially what we'll have here for amount is the updated amount based on whether there's a discount or not. If there's no discount, so if the discount length is zero or less, then we won't run this if statement here. We'll just get the amount that was passed in up here. So let's save this. Let's see if this runs. Let's hop down and we'll build our binary here and then I'll run the program. 
Okay, so we should actually add a new line here just to make this a little easier to read. So at the end of this string, I'll just do a backslash n to give it a new line, save it, and let's just do this one more time to make it a little easier to read. So we bought milk for $3, we bought cookies for $3, and we bought chips for $3. So if you see up here, milk was originally $3 with no discount. Cookies was $4 with a $1 discount, so it effectively brought it down to $3 here. And then chips for $4 with a $2 discount, so that brought it down to $2 here. But you don't have to pass a discount, so if an item does not have a discount, like in this case milk does not, it just has the original price be printed here. Hopefully that helps you understand the variadic operator and variadic functions in Go. This technique's really helpful if you want to do things like optional parameters like we showed in this last example. I use it for command line tools all the time. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows to share it with other folks and stay tuned to our channel for more content like this in the future. All right, thanks, take care.